Hey y'all, who is ready for some dinner inspiration? First up, I'm gonna show off these Cuban sandwiches. So here I have a four pound pork shoulder Boston roast, and that's gonna get slow cooked in the crock pot. So here I'm making kind of like a little marinade, I guess you'd call it, to pour over the pork. So you're gonna need the juice of two oranges, I don't have anything big enough to juice these, so I'm just squeezing them with my hands. Yes, they're clean, of course, but I'm just kind of placing my hand under it to catch any of like the pulp fall out. So next, I'm gonna add in the juice of two limes. Um, technically, the recipe that I was looking at said to use the juice of one and a half limes, but I knew if I stuck that other half um, in my fridge, it would've just went to waste, so. A little extra lime won't hurt. Um, we really love lime here anyways. Um, and plus at the end, like you can't really even taste it. I feel like it's more of a tenderizer. Um, so next I'm gonna add in just a big spoonful of minced garlic. And now I'm gonna start adding in the spices. So we've got two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of oregano, the smallest amount of some crushed red pepper flakes, a little under a tablespoon of some kosher salt, and one teaspoon of some ground black pepper. So now I'm just adding in two tablespoons of olive oil and I'm just gonna give that a quick mix. And then lastly, I'm gonna toss in two bay leaves. So now I'm gonna take that pork and I'm gonna move it on over to my crock pot. And I'm just taking a knife and I am piercing that meat all over. That way when I pour that like marinade over the top, it can seep like all throughout the pork to make it like extra juicy. So I am going to add my lid on this and I'm gonna let it cook on low for eight hours. So I went on about my day and when I got back home, my house smelled amazing and this put out like so much liquid as you can see and I'm going to show you just a second uh, like how tender this meat was I don't know if you can really tell but it was just falling apart like I was trying to be really careful here but this was probably the most tender pork I have made yet I decided to shred this in a separate bowl since I was using it for sandwiches I didn't want it to be like super liquidy but you can take spoonfuls of that like cooking liquid and pour it into your meat and stir it in but here I'm gonna start assembling the sandwiches so I cannot find Cuban bread anywhere and according to Google French bread is the next best thing so I grabbed a dollar loaf from Walmart and this one loaf will make like four good size sandwiches like trust me these will fill you up um so this one right here that I'm showing is going to be mine and Josh's we're gonna split this I do like to always like hollow out the bread because otherwise it's just too much bread in my opinion uh, but now I'm gonna lay on some mayo followed by some mustard I feel like that's pretty classic for a Cuban sandwich and you're gonna need some Swiss cheese it's got to be the Swiss for a Cuban sandwich I'm gonna add two slices on the bottom and next, I'm just gonna start layering on a good amount of that shredded pork. And then you're gonna need some ham, preferably some honey ham. I'm going with the Hormel Natural, but of course use whatever you want to, whatever brand really doesn't matter. I'm just doing a thin layer, but if you want more, by all means, double it up, triple it up. But y'all, this is the key ingredient. It's the Clausen Dill Pickle Slices. These are like our favorite pickles, period, but they are a must on this sandwich. Like it makes it. The dill flavor and the crunch, I feel like it just ties everything together. It's our favorite part of the sandwich, um, of course, besides the pork. But I added on two more slices of the Swiss cheese to kind of glue everything together. And you're going to want to grill this up. So I am pulling out my garlic Parmesan basil butter from Kroger that I'm always raving about. Melted that down in my skillet. And I'm just going to cook my sandwich for a few minutes on each side just to kind of warm everything up and melt that cheese. And of course, like brown and crisp up the bread. If you have a panini press, now would be the time to pull it out. I used to have have one but I got rid of it because for whatever reason I could not get mine cleaned I tried everything so as you can see I'm just taking a cast iron skillet and pressing the sandwich down and it works just fine so you'll just transfer that to a cutting board and slice it down the middle and it's ready to be served so I just paired it with some tater rounds as they call it with a side of ketchup of course to dip those in and y'all this is a must make you gotta trust me, these are absolutely delicious. Um, I used to make Cuban sandwiches a lot when I first started cooking, and I'm sad that I have not made them in a long time. I guess I've just forgot about them, but they're honestly like Josh and I's number one favorite sandwich and one of my favorite things to make at home.
Up next, I'm making chicken gnocchi soup. This one was new to us. We had never had it before, and we've also never had gnocchi before. So I was super excited to give this one a try. So here I just have one large chicken breast that I've sliced in half lengthwise just to make two thinner pieces. I feel like it cooks up better that way. And I'm seasoning mine with some Laurie season salt and some onion and garlic powder. I kept it pretty simple. I also heated up a couple tablespoons of olive oil in my Dutch oven. So once that was nice and hot, I placed my chicken season side down and here I'm just seasoning the other side the same exact way and feel free to change those seasonings up there's a million and one different ways that you could do that uh, but yeah so as you can see I've created a nice sear on it and I am trying to fully cook these through so I did cook them for a few minutes on each side since that second piece was thinner I did go ahead and pull that out first I do not like overcooked dried out chicken um, so that bigger one did need a little bit of extra time so I did cook that for a couple extra minutes but there they are, nice and golden brown and beautiful. So next, I'm going to get my veggies chopped up. So I have two stalks of celery that I've took the ends off of and I've washed really well. And then I'm also going to use two carrots that I went ahead and peeled off camera. And I'm just slicing that into like thin little rounds. And then I'm just taking my knife and I'm kind of rocking it back and forth so that I could get a finer dice on that because I didn't want big pieces in the soup. Um, so now back to the Dutch oven, I'm heating up four tablespoons of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil, and I'm dumping in my carrots and celery. If you like onions, dice you up one and you'd want to throw it in during this step. So I'm just going to saute those around to get those nice and softened. I did season those with some onion powder. And while those were cooking up, um, I am going to get a few cloves of fresh garlic. These have been peeled and I am going to do my best to mince these up. This is not a skill that I'm confident in. If you watch my videos, you know that I use the minced garlic in a jar a lot. Um, I really like it. I think it's really convenient, but every now and then I do want to start using some fresh garlic. It's really good. Um, and also, as you can see, since those vegetables like sweated out during cooking, all of that like stuff on the bottom released. Um, so now all those flavorful bits are throughout the vegetables. So I've thrown in a quarter cup of some all-purpose flour and cooked that down for a couple of minutes. And now I'm going to add in two containers of half and half, or you can just buy like one of those big ones. But honestly, when I was looking at this recipe, I didn't look at it that good and I didn't realize that you needed so much half and half. And like never ever do I have two containers in my fridge, but I guess the universe was on my side for once. So luckily I had what I needed. Like there's nothing worse than being halfway through a recipe and not having what you need. But yeah, so as you can see, I also added in a container of chicken broth, which that was a big one. So about four cups of chicken broth. So I did let that heat up so that everything could like start to thicken from the flour. And now I'm just seasoning it with some salt and pepper, some dried parsley. I did a little bit of dry thyme, not too much because I'm not crazy about it. And I also added in a small amount of nutmeg. So here is the gnocchi that I bought. I had no clue what to expect. As you can see, I had brought that up to more of like a bowl and I'm gonna toss on in my gnocchi. The next time though, I would be sure to kinda take the time to break it apart because these did want to stick together and it was a little tricky to get it broken apart. Uh, but off camera, I did go ahead and chop up a container of spinach. I believe it was like five ounces. And I also diced up the chicken. And I know that this looks like a lot of spinach, but honestly, like it wilts down really quickly and it's not going to look like that once it is done cooking. And if you have a picky family like me, soup is a great way to like sneak in spinach. Like I know that you can see it, but texture wise and taste wise, you can't even tell it's there. So that was it for the soup. I'm here. I'm just taking a fresh block of Parmesan cheese and I am shredding that over the top. If you choose to make this, do not skip this step. Like it's what takes it to next level in my opinion. And I just served this with some garlic knots. This was actually left over from a restaurant from the day before. Um, I just reheated those in the air fryer and I got them a little bit too brown, but dipping it in the soup, softened them like right back up. And it was the perfect combination. But y'all, this was delicious. Like I did not expect to love it as much as I did. And it was all of us, like even the kids really love this. Like we all went back for seconds and it is definitely a new family favorite. 
here I am making the Parmesan crusted pork chops and this is definitely up there on our list of favorite recipes for pork chops. This is also one of those things that like I always have all the ingredients on hand so I can pull this out like at any given time and it's really quick to throw together so it is perfect for those busy nights. So I have just laid out enough pork chops to feed my family and I'm just slightly seasoning both sides with this Tony Creole seasoning. You definitely don't want to go heavy handed with that or else it'll be too salty because you got to remember that this Parmesan cheese is pretty salty by itself. So this is one of those meals that like I don't measure anything out for, but I'll be sure to leave a link to the recipe in my description box if you need to see that. But you, need, you do need more Parmesan cheese than you do breadcrumbs. So I added just a small amount of the Italian style breadcrumbs. And now I'm just seasoning this up with some paprika, some dried parsley, some garlic powder, and some black pepper. So I'm just gonna get that mixed together and I find it best to do this with a fork. That way you can really like smush out the Parmesan cheese clumps, but that is it for the breading. Now I'm gonna take my pork chops and I'm just gonna roll it around in that Parmesan cheese and breadcrumb coating. Uh, make sure to take the time to really get the sides as well, especially if they're on the thicker side like mine were. And most times I have enough of this left over to go back and do like a double coating of it, which I did on this day as well. I just like to make sure that I have enough for the first round first. Um, but for one, that's gonna ensure that it's like extra tasty. And two, I just do not like to waste food. I mean, that Parmesan cheese is definitely not the cheapest thing to buy so I like to get my money's worth but yeah make sure that you like firmly press this down into this coating that way that like the breading stays on and nothing falls off but once I got those nice and coated I'm going to heat up three tablespoons of olive oil and a couple tablespoons of butter Normally, I do not add the butter. This is my first time doing that. I just want it to like really ensure that my breading was gonna stick on perfectly. So yeah, the bottom of my skillet is really well covered, but you can definitely make this healthier by cooking these up in the air fryer. I have done that many times and it does turn out good that way, but they turn out excellent when you do it this way. So I just cook those for a couple of minutes on each side and I transfer that to the oven. Make sure you have an oven safe skillet before doing that, but you wanna let that cook for 15 to 20 minutes according to the thickness of your pork chop. But to me, that is absolute perfection. These turned out so good, just like they always do when I make them. The flavor is just out of this world and they turned out so juicy and tender. Highly recommend. So I served these with um, sweet potatoes and I was gonna do butter and brown sugar, but when I went to get my brown sugar, it was hard as a rock. So I wanted to throw in this little clip in case you have never heard of this before, but if that happens, if you just add a slice of bread to your container and let it sit overnight, the next day it will be as good as new and it'll be soft. So it works really good. So I also served this with some asparagus and I seasoned it with this um, buttery steakhouse Kinder's rub and it turned out super good. Here's a clip from my parents. We usually go over there once a week for dinner. So my dad grilled out some burgers and hot dogs. So this is a pepper jack bacon burger and he made some Cincinnati style chili for the hot dogs and some homemade mac and cheese. Next, I am making the beef and broccoli ramen. So the first thing I did was get the sauce mixed together. So in here, this is gonna be a mouthful. So let's go. Cornstarch, soy sauce, rice vinegar, honey, sesame oil, beef broth, the squeezed ginger, some minced garlic, and some red pepper flakes. I will leave the link to this recipe in my description box so that you can get the exact measurements. Uh, so yeah, you get that mixed together. And then the next thing I did was chop up one head of broccoli that I washed first. And then you'll need two packs of ramen noodles. It doesn't matter the flavor because you're not gonna be using the seasoning packet. You're just using the ramen. And I know what you're thinking, how is two packs of ramen noodles gonna feed a family? But you just gotta trust me. We're gonna bulk it up and it's gonna be more than you think. So I did rinse those uh, with some cold water to stop the cooking. And now I've just heated up some oil in my skillet. It's nice and shimmery and super hot. And I grabbed this pack of like beef stir fry mix from my local Save-A-Lot. And um, that's all it says. So I'm not really sure what type of beef it was, but I threw it in my skillet and I only let this cook for like three minutes because I was like terrified of overcooking this because I do have trouble with that sometimes when it comes to beef like on a stove top. So yeah, three minutes. I seasoned it with some kosher salt and my fancy black pepper as I call it. Um, I'm just getting that tossed around with my tongs to get a nice sear on it. That's why I have my skillet up so high. And now I am just quickly removing that to a separate bowl just to get it off of that heat. We do not want some tough steak. So 
Now I'm gonna throw in my broccoli into all those nice like steak drippings to give it like extra flavor. Let me get that kind of tossed around to absorb that. Then I'm gonna throw in a half a cup of water and cover it with some tin foil because I don't have a lid for this skillet. That way it'll steam. So I'll let that cook for a few minutes. It was um, perfectly tender to our liking. Then I'm just throwing back in the, the noodles and the steak and I threw on in that sauce. So I'm just gonna toss that around with my tongs to get everything like incorporated. And I let it cook for just like a couple of minutes just to kind of activate that cornstarch to thicken it up and to just make sure that everything is like perfectly coated. So that is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat off and now this is optional. You don't have to do this, um, but I am going to sprinkle this with some sesame seeds. So here is my bowl. This turned out incredible. Um, I love anything like beef and broccoli anyways, but the addition of the ramen noodles was super good. This is my first time making this recipe and the beef turned out so tender and juicy and flavorful. The broccoli was cooked perfectly and it just had a really good authentic taste. Lastly, I am gonna make the Southwestern chicken and yellow rice. So for the chicken, I just grabbed a rotisserie. The lemon pepper flavored ones are my favorite and I'm gonna be using half of that. Um, I'm also gonna cook up this five ounce bag of yellow rice. I'm just gonna cook it according to the directions on the back of the package easy peasy. So I did pull that chicken from the bones and shred it up and toss it into a large mixing bowl. And to that, I'm going to add in one can of cream of chicken, one can of corn that I have drained, a can of black beans that I have drained and rinsed, one can of rotel that I have drained, and you'll need about a tablespoon of some taco seasoning. So once my rice was fully cooked and nice and fluffy, I'm just going to throw that in on top and then I'm just gonna fold all of that together. I'm gonna pull out my nine by nine baking dish that I have sprayed with some Pam, and I'm gonna get all of that dumped out, and I'm just gonna take the back of my wooden spoon, and I'm just kinda pressing it down, and I'm gonna get that smooth out into just like an even layer. Then lastly, I'm just gonna grab whatever cheese I have on hand. On this day, it was a Fiesta blend, and I'm just gonna add a nice layer of that to the top. That's gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. And this is what it looked like when it came straight out of the oven, nice and cheesy and it just looks delicious because it is. This is probably like my second time making it, I'm pretty sure. And I wouldn't say this is like a favorite recipe, but it was good enough to make again, if you know what I'm saying. And we like to scoop this up with some tortilla chips and that's really good. So I paired this with this jalapeno cornbread. This was my first time making it and it was pretty good. It was sweet and spicy, but this is going to wrap up the video. I hope that you found some inspiration. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.